actually good you ask. Oh. Some people don't ask. This is our reference device. So what we're showing here are two use cases on 845 versus 855, showing the power efficiency improvements. On this side we have an Instagram uh, use case, on the other side we have PUBG. Both are showing about a 22% power efficiency improvement versus 845. And you're measuring active milliwatts average or? We have both. Uh, Average power, average current, and a song. What else are we measuring over here? Oh, just the average power. Yeah. Just average power. Okay, so it's just average power. Yeah. But continuous. Right. Yeah. And are you resetting the average power measurement? No, it's been just running. So come back later. As Probably. long as things haven't reset, we're, uh, we'll be the same. Uh, same performance, and there could be some variation in performance here just because the 855 does have more capability as far as GPU, but in these use cases, I wouldn't expect the performance in other use cases. So, the video, like the image quality is insane, but it seems to stutter during. You know what? We, I, we shot it at 24 initially, and so I think what happened was when they encoded it out, they might have done it back to 30, and so it kind of. Ah, yeah. But that, but if you can see this one, we shot it at 30 frames. Yeah, that one is a lot better. No, it does it does HDR. In my experience, the tuning the tuning that was done it doesn't it wasn't tuned at 10 bit yet. Yeah. So by default, it keeps a little more true to life, a little yeah more natural. But you could see it. Like ten bit, every there's no gradation, you know, there's no banding. All right. Um, it's all smooth color ramps. Yeah. And uh, it's the, uh, HDR. That's HDR ten. It's it's an OLED yeah. dis OLED display that is HDR capable. It's not a ten bit display. Okay. So this is a it's a it's an eight bit OLED display. But it's way different of what it shows from the recording. But oh yeah yeah the yeah. profile. Yeah. yeah. Just a reference design. Let's see. What camera app is this using? It's just, just a, a Qualcomm it's just a Snapdragon uh, camera, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it serves that camera app serves as the foundation for a lot of our customers' camera applications, yeah. uh, particularly smaller OEMs. Uh, but uh, yeah. I think I see the larger ones make their own. Just like the basics. Yeah. Uh, but this is where you'll have you know the Samsungs and LGs and Sonys and and uh, and some of the bigger bigger OEMs will rewrite the app and give it all the features that they want it to have and you get the full manual camera modes and all of that. Of course, that happens right. after after commercialization. Awesome. It's all it's weird. Yeah, 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 sorry. It is. Uh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Is 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 a. Is a this is a new, it's a living AX, you know, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi lines recently announced. So what we're showing is the advantage of the ace patient stream sound. That in a congested network, you get far fewer opportunities to get, you know, data from the access point. But if you can use them more efficiently, it has a real meaning to users, as we're showing here with video. So this is streaming 4K video. And we're showing that it, it works well for the eight spatial screen seven devices, not so well for the competitors Wi-Fi with four spatial screen seven. And we've created congestion. You can see on there we're showing from some cameras that you see inside and outside. So we create congestion by putting them a long way away with big thick concrete walls in between. Come on. Hey, we're showing off a couple mm -hmm. demos here uh, okay. based on voice user interfaces. First one we're oh, showing cool. off here. Uh, and That's an interesting demo. one. Yeah, so yeah. the one thing all your digital systems have in common, whether you're using Alexa, Cortana, Google, mm -hmm. right, is they have to be able to hear your voice. Right. Uh, what we've added in 855 in hardware is, is world-class echo cancellation and noise suppression. The idea here is no matter how noisy your environment, we want to be able to remove all that background noise, even including music. So if your phone is blasting music, we want to remove that as well, right. so that your digital assistant can hear just your voice. So to show this off, we'll go ahead and play some music. So I've got this basically cranked as loud as I can get through the speaker here. So I'll go ahead and just say a couple things. Let's talk in a normal volume. Testing one, two, three. Hopefully you're enjoying your time in Maui. 
And then now this is presented kind of a before and after. So if you put on the headphones, you'll actually be able to hear the difference between this should be here, what you'd expect. So lots of people talking, the music blasting, maybe your voice kind of mixing a little bit. And if you listen to this version, you are just should just hear your voice. Okay. So I oh, it only works with headphones, or do I have to? Uh, unfortunately, right now we have it in headphones because we don't want to, all the other noise to leak in. So sorry okay. about that. Now, now, is this does this work with uh, any third-party apps? Like, it, how do you turn it on? Yes, this is actually um, so. This is sits in our audio path in hardware. Right. So we have what we call this low-power audio subsystem, where the idea okay. is we offload a lot of the audio algorithms, audio processing, so that the CPU, the DSPs are free to do other stuff, right? Free okay. to do your XR, things like that. This means that any app that uses voice or audio uh, gets this for free. So it, just, so it just happens automatically? Do you yes. turn it on and off in settings? Like, what if you don't want it? Uh, you, there is the ability for the OAM to basically surface a toggle if for some reason you want to disable it for some reason. Like maybe you are trying to get raw right. um, audio video. So that is something that is configurable. Okay. But it is also something that is, because it's not something where, oh, it's a library or it's a software module because right. it's all being done in hardware, it's something that third-party apps get for free. If like say, awesome. for example, we're showing here a single mic machine learning with a Skype call. So well, third-party app like Skype. Take yeah. Benefits of well, it's, a, it's good for a user experience. You don't want this thing to work here and not work here. Yeah, exactly. the user doesn't know why. Yep. You know, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm glad I don't know. Okay, so this is probably the best demo. Right. So now I don't have to look at this. Now I'll look up to a bigger molder than the spirit. while still maintaining the resolution. So as you see. So wireless, um, what, 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 are we, what are we calling this? Uh, so this is showing the first 11 AY base, 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Okay, 11 A base, right? Yeah, 11 AY. All right, excellent. Let me, um, All right, so I'm just gonna thrust, yeah. steering, yeah. e-brake to spin to get more thrust. Okay. Is this, is this broadcasting in 4K? Uh, this is actually on a 4K TV, yes. No, but it's broadcasting in 4K? Uh, I, I don't know the exact resolution of the uh, game. Okay. Uh, but I know we were using a 4K right. to okay. maintain high resolution. Yeah, a little bit about what Google presented this morning. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm part oh, the Google of the Lens. Okay. Google Lens and Augmented Reality yeah. team. And so, uh, as you mentioned, uh, this morning, 2019 is really a pivotal year for us. Uh, we are looking at AI acceleration and 5G seriously, and we partnered with Qualcomm on the Snapdragon 855 chipset for some real-world applications. And so what I'm showing over here is the effort that we drove with Qualcomm on enabling on-device hardware acceleration on the Snapdragon 855 okay. using an NAPI. And uh, what this enables us uh, uh, is to detect dense text very quickly with low latency and with significant power efficiencies. And we, we posted some of the numbers up there. So if you look at it right now, uh, this demo shows that I have the device set up to uh, an, an accelerated model over here. Okay. And when I point it over to text, if you look at it, it's really wow. quick in terms yeah. of picking up dense text. So yeah. Now this is significant because I'm not connected to the internet. I'm not mm -hmm. connected to all Wi-Fi. Everything is on device over here. And if you think about it even further, dense text is computationally very expensive because of the number of pixels and the number of right, inferences of it has to gather. So, so how does it do with um, other fonts and and um, to, uh, basically how, yeah. stuff that's messier than a simple page? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, so we Different color backgrounds, you know, yeah. magazine pages, glossy surfaces, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we're testing this across many different surfaces, many yeah. different fonts, and many different languages. Okay. Right? So we're running evaluation models on all of them. But step one is trying to do this on device with, right. you know, something that doesn't burn up the phone. Right. And something that can be really, really quick, which is very tough to achieve with the So, So what do you do with the text once it, once you pull it up? I mean, with yeah, Google so Lens, there, it, you run, many, can you run it through Google Translate? Yeah, you know, yeah. Okay. so there, if you think That's about it, the do. applications of like being able to lift text like this are numerous, right? Right. You can think about uh, copy-paste as being an application. You can paste mm -hmm. this in a mail or you can paste it in you know, like your notes or hey, I found sure. a menu, I want to like... Sure. Uh, pick up like uh, the information off of a menu. Uh, there, there are other applications around Translate, and Google has a lot of like products which can make use of these detection capabilities. And 
one of the things that we also are talking about over here mm -hmm. is auto detection, what we call AR autocomplete, right. which has significance in this detection capability and our ability to recognize an environment and automatically drop relevant assets. Wow. So Fahima over there, my colleague, she can tell you a little bit more about it. Um, so today and so yes. I'm sure he mentioned the importance of us being able to recognize the scene and uh, place or sorry so what we're doing here the goal here is to use computer vision to recognize what's happening to analyze the scene and then to place high quality AR assets um, and so as you can see on this demo what we've done we've recognized this table there's some plates there's cutlery and so we're placing AR experiences that make sense for this space um, okay. so in the previous video we'll get back to it but we placed the Williams number that was 100 megabytes which is a very large uh, it's very large right and so something like that requires a connection that has a pretty high bandwidth and also a so it's able to place these high quality assets Over 5G, that's happening a lot. Right. Over 4G. Sure. So, so um, it's it's benefiting from the bandwidth of 5G, right? Not exactly. the, not just the uh, like, because not just computing power from the, the Snapdragon 855. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So this is Google Yeah, somewhat. Yeah, so it's, um, the goal I mean, I know what it is. I don't really use it. You, know? uh, <laughs> you don't. I'm kidding. Uh, so the goal is to help you understand what you're looking at. So take these wine bottles, for instance. Over, you can see the difference over 4 and 5 years. That happened really quickly. Uh, but with Google Lens, uh, what we're having to do there is uh, capture the image. So we need a high-quality uh, image of the product. We need to recognize who that product is. We're sending that information to our Lens servers, and then we're sending a result back. That all happens. A lot faster. Yeah, sure. Awesome. Is that it? Is there more? No, those are, you went through the three. We have the source of focal. And now they call it. Much of the large version of two cameras for two cameras to be able to do. The intelligence artificial can do it even before the photo has been clicked. Big difference. Very cool. Ve işte Qualcomm Snapdragon 825 çiftler kullanan telefonlar gördüğümüzde bunlar referans tasarımlara sahip. Bunlar aslında henüz bir marka falan yok üstünde gördüğünüz gibi. Ee, ve aslında e, Snapdragon 855 e, işlemcisi e, milyar dolarlık ekonomiyi nasıl yaratıyor buradan da anlamak mümkün. Özellikle e, baktığımızda bir cent kadar büyük bir olmayan bir işle, işlemci ve antenden oluşan yeni 5G platformu aslında yepyeni bir iş alanlarının ve girişimlerin doğmasına sebep oluyor. Burada gördüğümüz sadece 5 tane girişimden birkaç tanesi sizin e, en önemlisi doğru video Right. Wait. And so, if I put on my glasses, oh. you can do that. And it works with glasses? It works with glasses. There we go. Cool. So, so the efficiency of, it would depend also on the kind of hardware that the vendor would choose to use. Or is this, is it, or is time of flight? It's the algorithm um, and the processing. Of it. Okay. So time of flight um, just takes, is just a, is a, Less expensive option. Right. Um, so, so they you can make more sophisticated arrays. Right. right, and you could do two cameras if you wanted. That's just really pricey. Right. So a camera and a flash, you know, bouncing that off. Yeah. Um, and then this does three because it's. Um, yeah. So it does depth, right? So that gives a better. That alone
and it works in the dark point too. Of view, yeah, it's not, it's not a flat picture. It's much harder to spoof. Um, so. Can I quickly just... So, oh, of course, have guys, fun. What kind of sensors does this need to have to work? This is a time of flight sensor that's using here, but it doesn't have to be a time of flight. It can be other other ones. Okay. I will, like, like, um, Most OEMs want uh, low cost, right? For, for right. Well, some want... Like, well, I mean, how much how much of a cutout from the display will it require to... Oh, I don't to... Know. Yeah, that I don't know. Okay. okay. I can try to find out for you. Right. Well, yeah, because just because some, some companies have like a larger le notch in it and it gets those depth sensing features, you know. Um, is there is there a demo for? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I work here. Like yeah, that's how I like it here. <laughs> so hopefully your videos, if you can go pick up a Snapdragon A55 handset, the colors are going to absolutely rip because of the 4K HDR video capture. What's in here? Over here we are demonstrating the benefits of low latency with Aptex Adaptive. Okay. All right. Is that, is that it? Is oh, uh, yeah. Now I gotta try it? Yeah. If you put the phone, say, in your back pocket or some other type of uh, mm -hmm. you know, RF uh, difficult situation, you'll get glitches. But what we do with Aptex Adaptive is we're able to scale the bitrate. So I'm plotting the bitrate. And whenever I do the same operation with that phone, you can see that we react to that and we reduce the bit rate so you maintain a continuous um, music signal. Cool.